to the direction. But, but I've got a counter. They oh, okay. also lost on red. Oh, okay. So this is new territory for all of us. There we go. Exactly. We'll have to try and figure it out. But I also want to see how we uh, figure out this draft. Because, I mean, Nico actually banned away by JDG. I thought we were kind of discussing before we came into this that we thought that would be very high priority for KT, but especially with the way BDD has been piloting that champion to annoy everyone to, to trigger themselves and guess what was, the, uh, was happening for champions, for minions. But Renata taken away as well. I think at the moment it's going to be Zaya. high priority on Zaya. Yeah. yeah, they have to, right? Like, I think KT doesn't really have an option here because if you give over the Zaya to Ruler, you're, you're, it's, it's not happening. The problem do now is, don't you just get jinxed and then yeah. and then you still have the same problem as last game? Perhaps we're going to try and see what uh, comes around this draft afterwards. Is the Orianna going to be the consideration here for Knight once again now that Nico has been taken away? It definitely feels like there's some sort of a response here. I mean, you don't leave the Zaya up unless you're very much aware that the Zaya is going to be taken here. So I think the big question mark is, do we see something like the Caitlyn or the Jinx? And basically, you want to get range into that bot side for Ruler. And he hasn't played anything like the Ziggs prior to Worlds, at least in Summer. So I'm curious to see if he's maybe picked that up in his champion. Yeah, I, 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 I've been waiting yeah. for Ruler to pick up a <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I appreciate your optimism, but after a bunch of years, um, I, I yeah, think There Ruler were a few metas that. there where he was supposed to be playing like Vladimir no. and Ziggs. No, no. That's, it wasn't a rule. This thing. is a classic though. BDD on his uh, favorite bird could be a good pickup here. Um, we'll see if it actually gets up, uh, get, ends up getting locked in, because I do really believe that one of the biggest advantages that KT had was how well BDD was able to play proactively. And I think on Azir, even though it is one of his hallmark picks, it is a lot harder to do that consistently. We do now have to make sure that we keep the idea of BDD's Azir in the back of, my, back of our minds, even when KT are about 5,000 gold behind. So it does... Um, does make for a lot of stress Ooh. here on the caster desk. Some Lance engage options. This is definitely comfort for Lahens. Like you're saying, Chronicler, this is how he gets his work done. It's on the Nautilus. And so, a couple of kite back champions and some engage options as well. It also makes it very difficult to go for something like a Jinx into this bot lane now because you have, haven't got a safety of a time Kench. You've already selected the Rakan. And you don't really have an opportunity to try and like get away from what's going to be a very potent team fight for KT. So at the moment, I love what KT have done. They're starting to pigeonhole JDG a little bit it into finding out like, okay, well, what does Ruler have in his back pocket? Especially if you want to take things like the Zarian that away. And now with the Aatrox picked up for 369, I imagine it'll be top lane bans going towards King. What I want though is jungle bans. Ban all of the junglers because we have Cousin Kanavi. These are the two of the largest champion pools that we have as far as jungle is concerned. Of course, Cuz maybe more on the eclectic side, not necessarily the large side, but Kanavi can play actually every champion ever. All in I'm the saying is he's played things like Shaco jungle before. He's played a there huge amount go. of stuff. And like there was a combo coming into Worlds, which was this like Shaco Oriana combo. So I'm kind of holding my breath to see oh. maybe at some stage we get it, but Twitch I don't know. Twitch Shaco yeah. 4 5 on red. <laughs> so, that's it. That's uh, the I, I dream. Wanna, I want to bring up a story of something that actually happened okay. uh, in 2021. Which How is dare when, you ruin our dreams? Where, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm allowed to. Atlas has ruined a lot of my jokes. <laughs> I finally get the opportunity to pay back. Uh, but uh, back then, it was Pioshik that brought out the uh, Hecarim and Udyr meta, and he gave credit to Kanavi. He's like, yeah, that was the guy that yeah. showed me the way how to play these champions. So this is a player that has a, such a deep history of doing exactly that. The Zeri to me is interesting, because I do actually think that even knowing how good Ruler is at a champion with the Nautilus, you're always going to have at least a way to threaten that Zeri oh. in the back line. And it is the Sivir in stats, so it's going to be a short range here for JDG. And that was going to be the question, was what do you default to? I mean, having the spell sheet is going to help with one of the engages coming across from the Nautilus, but now you got a Vi, which is also going to cause you some serious pain. So I think it is going to be a bit of a tough fight here for Ruler to stay safe as the game starts to go on. But which especially, I think, if you don't have the... Well, actually, I was going to say if the Vi is going to come through and maybe Kanavi needs to go for something like the Wukong on the other side. Well, Rel being considered here as that final pickup, and that'll be locked in here for Cuz. So, not really going very deep into the champion pools, especially if Maokai is going to be the answer here on JDG's side. A little bit more fun if it is the Lee Sin, but we'll stop talking about hovers and, hovers and by we, I mean me. Jax into Aatrox, something that has been very volatile there towards the top side of the map. But let's see, Kanavi. Probably just flexing, basically saying that I can play almost anything here, but the timer is going to run out. He's going to have to decide. Ooh. 
And it is going to be the Wukong in the end. There is so much AoE team fight here from JDG. And that's why I much prefer the Wukong. I think the Vi, you don't really have a target you want to go towards. Zir ultimate, Zai ultimate makes it very difficult for you to find that fight. But if you're able to get in a Wukong onto this backline, any access at all for a split second, Orianna ult across the backline, then you get the follow-up ult, you get the AoE coming through from the Sivir. It actually makes these fights incredibly potent from JDG's side. And KT will have to make sure they're getting to the objective first, setting up vision, not allowing JDG to circumvent them in, uh, like we saw in that last game. The one advantage that KT have over the last time is that I do think that they have comeback mechanics, unlike in the previous game. Previous game, I, I think the composition, Figo was a little bit, little bit uh, divided about, but the rest, if you are able to win the early skirmishes, I think that composition can function. This time around, the Weaver hands on his Nautilus, which is by far his most successful champion, as we have seen domestically. And is it enough lockdown to consistently get to the backline? Because I think JDG's comp, not only can you play for if you do find a flank, but like with Sivir ultimate as well as Wukong, the amount of engage from KT that you can absorb only to then counter engage is a really, really scary thing. And it's thing uh, we've seen JDG execute comps like this countless times. Yeah, exceptionally well. And they can just, if you're ever grouped up, clumped up, caught in a choke point like KT was many times in the last game, it could just be lights out in an instant. The ricochets, the cyclones, shockwave over the top, and then an Aatrox running amok. I mean, there is not a whole lot you can do about that. I think the one angle for KT is that there are a lot of item-reliant carries on JDG. And if you can get an early lead again and not allow Ruler to get to his items, could be an angle. Certainly could, but here we are onto the rift for the third game of this best of five series. KT, one of the last two hopes for the LCK, now up against the tournament favorites in JDG. And remember, guys, you can connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive Brom W emote, one of the best emotes ever created ever. It is a banger. It is. I'm excited to try and get that when I get back because <laughs> I cannot even attempt to connect to my account back home. <laughs> Um, just to remind you guys, BDD is the Azir guy. He's extraordinarily good at this champion. Uh, he has played so many games. Him and Faker are uh, two of the players that are over 100 games on this champion. And in fact, BDD is over 130. He currently has a 61.3% win rate Not bad. on this Azir. Um, and we often just call him the Azir guy uh, over and over again. Uh, in the LCK, it's often banned, but this time we are going to be able to see it. You saw it in this tournament against D+. And KT, they were losing that game, and then they didn't. One of the big reasons why JDG was able, I think, to get the early game leads that they did was of how well they tracked Cuz. So we already saw the invade able to set up vision and keep track of where this rel is going. Because I do think that as good as Kanavi's team fighting has been, Cuz's early game has, to me, been one of the most impressive parts of really any jungler. It's just about if he doesn't get it off. How much can he do in the mid to late? I also think these more tank-oriented junglers just allow Kuz to face check, which in a lot of situations last game, KT really struggled with because it's Viego, it's you got a Renat on the bot lane for lens. It's not these tanky champions that you can kind of do a huge amount with. So I like that now we're kind of get to see Kuz go back towards that stop and maybe go back to bot lane because he's again going for this three camp start into a potential play in the bottom end of the map. For an opportunity, BDD with a big shove in this mid lane. Kanavi waiting in the wings, an opportunity perhaps, but we'll see. Having a look at the state of all of these lanes, in fact, a little bit better than what KT have been dealing with uh, other times uh, so far this series. As you can see, aiming in the hands, just trying to stand their ground. BDD shoving quite nicely, keen with control topside. I actually like this from uh, Kuz. You can see he did all three camps bot, but did it on a ward. So you think, oh, we saw him move back towards bot side, which is why you see the ward placed by the JDG bot lane in River. They're trying to psych them out. And even you can see Wukong immediately move over towards his blue because he wants to make sure that's going to be secure. So for the moment, Kuz is kind of playing on the heartstrings of JDG, trying to get them to think he's not in positions that he is. Also see Keen going for something we've seen a lot of Jaxes do, which is very early and the uh, especially with lethal tempo like your first couple of levels are so insanely lethal so 369 has to respect gonna get you a free back your s keen probably don't even have to invest your teleport and this is one of the ones that i actually maybe didn't pick up for it right there because gb has been a big proponent of this and has been screaming about it from the rafters is if you go for the fourth wave and you actually go for the uh, farming behind the tower you can pick up sheen on this first reset tp back to lane and you end up incredibly strong but keen actually not going to be going for that just happy enough to pick up a long sword and walk his way back to lane for the moment. Oh, gonna be spell shielded there. The answering knockup is good there from missing. 
Health trade going to be one out here by JDG as Cuz collects himself a Rift Scotland Knight. Not a lot of mana. He's going to be going back home here as aiming down to 300 in the bottom lane. JDG kind of taking over down here. Looking pretty good with this Sivir Rakan. Navi looking for the invade on this top side. Was put out that the chickens have respawned. That would also now give information to uh, KT that Wukong is on this bottom half of the map, but I don't think they really want to go for too much. Knight doesn't have control over mid. It's more about, hey, can we get safety here for our bottom lane to finally crash this wave and maybe pick up a turret place? Bit of an opportunity, perhaps, as aiming, I believe, ghosted to lane just to make sure that he could get back after this reset, hopefully get the cannon. And, and aiming, uh, there's a reason why I was actually expecting him to continue banning Desire. It's because it's not traditionally one of his best champions, right? It's been the Zeri, the Kai'Sa. This player really excels in BDD. Might be in trouble here, but will respect, uh, not going to get taken out. But the, the fact that he already is being put this far behind in the pure 2v2 with Kanavi not even doing so much as looking towards that bot lane, it's a really big early win for JDG. Goes though, trying to see if you can spot out Kanavi here again. A huge amount of this again is the information game to make sure you can actually follow. Knight's in a position here to come across though, so yeah. those does need to be careful. Warrior Trickster now on cooldown. Cuz doesn't have his aftershock though, as he's just trying to fight this one out for the chickens. How's the smite fingers, boys? See how they do lock this one down. Meanwhile, missing is going to get hooked. Gets taken down extraordinarily low. Gets a bit of a heal though, as the Gleaming Quill did connect. And KT, they'll have to just accept a decent trade here on this bottom side. Unless Lahens can find a hook. Here in the mid lane, Kanavi and Knight just trying to get Knight a good back timer, trying to get this lane in a better position. Yeah, trying to see if they can spot out PDD before he hits that level six. For everyone at home, see the purple bar just underneath the faces of each of the champions. That's what is the XP bar. So you can see Knight there just ticking over to level six. So keep your eyes on it as Kanavi and Kuz find each other again. Yeah, Kanavi down a bit of a shot here across the bow. Kuz finds the shattering strike. Uh, it's just a 1v1. Neither of these bottom lanes too interested. Wave getting stacked up here by JDG. They have some control. That means Cuz has to back away. And into the river goes Knight as well. Always seems to be hovering, ready to help out here towards this bottom side. This is that play that you were talking about, Dacta. They're going to go for this first dragon. Don't think KT can do too much about it. Although Cuz is moving in towards this bottom lane, looking for a possible gank angle. They do get the spell shield out of Ruler. That's now on cooldown, and now they're looking to chase out Cuz. In the meantime, they are just taking the dragon. And this is where the early uh, lane pressure from Ruler missing really pays off, right? The fact that they have a higher health bar, that they have Pryo on the wave. Cuz tries to go for something there with, with, with both summoners being available for Ruler, as well as missing. There's just no shot you're ever going to get them as Ruler flashing his jet. <laughs> That's like he's flashed multiple different <laughs> yeah. ones as well. And maybe Lahens caught an eye of that one course was on Gen G for all of last year. Speedy D eats a shockwave, but not going to be too bothered. And uh, the Halo Blades, I think, really allows the Azir to play pretty consistently aggressive in that mid lane. And you can see the results. I mean, a 10 CS lead for BDD in that mid lane. He's been doing a great job of punishing Knight in these early stages. And you can see once you get access to that Orianna ult, if there's no objectives up, you might as well toss it out. It does push BDD back. It does give you the opportunity to maybe crash this wave, but he doesn't know BDD's healed and doesn't know the Kuz is here. Yeah, Knight, not a lot of mana available here, as we can see, but he's going to be able to get that last cog out and does manage to uh, thin out the wave. BDD catches it and Kuz slinks back into the Fog of War. Grabs some more of his camps. As far as gold is concerned, there is nothing to talk about really at all. Outside of the fact that one dragon was picked up by JDG. And it's it's a pretty uneventful early game. And I think looking at the champions, you can argue that both really benefit from this, right? I think that the, the combination of specifically Azir and Zaya has been really tough to deal with in late game. Jax is self-explanatory. And then on the other end, you have Sivir and Orianna. So uh, really will come down, I think, to how the mid game is set up here. Because either of these two teams, if you do get control and you start getting ahead, hit those item breakpoints, it can be really hard to consistently fight fights on the other end. The Hens has level six here, though. You can see Missing just ticking over. Ruler and Aiming both still don't have theirs available as Ruler just now gets it. I think a lot of this for JDG is we want to try and slow push out this bot wave so we can either look towards the Rift Herald or at least get some hurt onto the Hens. Orianna having that quicker reset in mid also gives her the tempo advantage there. So JDG just slowly but surely kind of working their way up towards this Rift Herald to secure that one again. Yeah, the Hens actually going to get spotted here by Missing. It does grand entrance over to him. It looks like JDG will just claim this Rift Herald. No contest here from KT, realizing that they were beaten to the punch on this one. Kanavi will collect the iron. That is some money in waiting. Hands. Will he actually invest? No. 
Decides to hold onto it. Depth charge kept in the back pocket. It's missing. Once again, rotating over BDD, looking for an opportunity. Level 8. The low health bar missing could set up for a potential play onto the bottom half of the map, though. Missing is trying to help Knight keep control of Midwave to prevent that happening, but we're missing now being taken low and having low mana. The hen's going to be able to move bot, but because staying on this top end of the map, I don't really think you have an opportunity to really go for much. Bo both supports just doing exactly the same thing, invading enemy jungle, setting up a ward, and then immediately recalling. And yeah, I wouldn't have minded KT actually trying to throw an ultimate out there, especially because Herald's gone and Dragon is in two and a half minutes as they're going up. Kanavi is hiding in the shadows, though. Yeah, Kaz looking for that opportunity. Well done, it comes down. There's the Magnus Storm. First oh! blood goes to Keen, though. Empress Divide going to be used for the disengage, and they'll take a plate along with it. Where'd he go? You blink and 369 is gone, had his flash, wasn't expected to be burst out that heavily. Even Kanavi invested his flash to try and get there, was too late to the party. And I think that they knew that Kuz was on his way up, but I don't know if they knew about BDD as well. So I think with this play, they were ready to try and fight for the 2v2. But you see, the moment that BDD shows up, the 100 to 0 is just there. No drain tanking available, and Kanavi just doesn't get to join the play soon enough. Great ultimate from BDD to disengage there as well, and that was exactly what I wanted to see from KD. KT. JDG had already gotten control of Dragon, they got in the Rift Herald, they kind of slowly but surely were starting to pick up speed, but disrupting that top side now, getting that kill for the Jax, and using the lane pressure that BDD should be able to get is exactly how KT can try and get this tempo back in their favor. Not going to be too much of an issue as far as the global objectives are concerned, though. Of course, JDG will be able to get back out onto the map, contest for this next Dragon. Going to be the mountain here. Will take either team a very long time to take down. Of course, the huge health pool of that particular dragon. They should still be able to contest vision. And the biggest win, I think, there for KT is that they are both getting the teleport from Knight and Kanavi will not have flash. So that does mean that if they try to contest for this upcoming Drake, which I do think both teams are going to be looking towards, uh, it is something that maybe they get to utilize. Knight, obviously, in mid should still be able to join, but maybe a little bit later, maybe BDD can get an extra back in. I don't think K I sorry, I don't think JDG can contest KT here. I mean, even the fact Radiant Virtue now complete on Kuz, thanks to that assist that he'd had, he's going to be in a great spot. You're going to get a reset coming through first here from BDD. I don't think he'll have his Mythic, but just being in a position to follow up and also Ruler not being able to capitalize on the fact he had this strong early game to get a Mythic for himself. It just feels like KT are too powerful at the moment, but maybe I'm, maybe JDG are feeling the same way because Missing is very much poking his head in. Missing is not afraid of anything at all. He hasn't been all tournament, just happy to walk over yeah. and gather as much information Sometimes as he would like. Sometimes I wish he would be. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit, um, a, a bit heart attack worthy, perhaps. As he moves down towards Ruler once again, Lahens still on the chase. Got a bit of a fight here towards his top side as well, as we can see. 369 landing a few of these abilities, but I believe he's already put his World Ender on cooldown. Keen trading ultimates. Oh, Kanavi does have to find Sunder Redone. And KT don't, doesn't look like they're starting a dragon right now. So should be an opportunity here for JDG to contest. With the Mythic Spike also being available, there's also still a Herald that can be put down. So JDG have the option. Do we go for the fi uh, 4v4 or do we send the Herald and get some plates? I think it's going to be the Herald angle. I thought maybe we get BDD try and fully push mid, reset, TP back in with his Mythic. Because I'm pretty sure now we should have enough gold for it. But with Mythic just being plunked down in mid, JDG want to look for the fight. Yeah, reset comes through on the Dragon. Now it's JDG that is set up. Cuz moving on over, spotted on the ward, missing, always knows what's going on here as BDD is trying to deal with this giant piece of shellfish and it looks like it is going to be two drakes going over to JDG in trade for no money picked up from that Rift Herald. So two plates, I guess, Cloud? and it's going to be Earth, Wind and Fire, boys. This is, uh, <laughs> we can group tonight, guaranteed. As, okay, uh, Cuz is just going to get caught out. The Magnus Storm is going to be used but more of just a celebration of the circles. And JDG, they'll grab a red buff as well. I mean, great pick off. You get the dragon. I was about to say, as long as KT are playing this safe, they should be able to slow down the pace of the game, give his ear time to scale. Look at like Amy and Keen getting to positions where they're super happy, but Kanavi playing off of the wave pressure that he had, immediately going, and now Keen, what's happening here? Yeah, I don't know how we got to this point, but it's not exactly great news. 369 really feeling good. And oh, now this one's working. Okay. Yeah, King doesn't have a lot of options, and now Counter Strike is on cooldown as well. In comes BDD, though. King, can he actually get the kill? There it is for 369. Empress Divide is going to pick that one up. But BDD had to invest his flash, and it's a one for one in the end. That was pixels.
away from missing from 369. Just barely catches him, the Dark and Blade. And now the TP up to top side, just to try and keep that CS in favor of JDG. Yeah, like that. Able to get the blade on mid. BDD will not be able to pick up the wave and then simultaneously guard the top side plates. As oh, we've seen Lance in this position before. Can they actually win the 2v2 though? I'm not so sure. Yeah, Lance is like, no, oh, oh, gets yeah, canceled. He's gonna get interrupted as well as now Ruler. Gets all of that extra movement speed. Boomerang Blade landing as well. Every bit of damage secured by the Sivir. Getting a little bit scary, even with just one item. Of course, the scaling of Sivir is just ridiculous, but not necessarily something that spikes on one. But it means now Lehenz is going to be late on the reset. He wants to try and get up towards this Rift Herald. Missing, poking his head in around again, but he knows he's got the advantage when it comes towards moving up towards his top end. Ruler has already disappeared into mid lane to catch that wave, so just a nice opportunity, but we won't get any more information to what happened here. Unfortunately, we're just going to get to see Keen go down. And here the problem is Keen doesn't actually have any mana available, right? JD or uh, 369 does a really good job of not getting hit by the initial counter strike and then hits him with the flash. If you invest that flash and BDD still kills you and Keen gets out, could it be a disaster? Instead, you trade one for one and you're really happy on the play because of the response that came through. As Teleport coming through, aiming. He's gone real aggressive, does manage to get the Blade Caller onto 369. Bit of a, yeah, wow. just gonna do a bit of damage, but I do really like it from Amy. It's a counter punch because on the top side of the map, K or JDG are picking up the Herald. That's the problem though. They're probably gonna pick up top tower if they really want to. You can see Knight is already pushing there and they could potentially go for the mid lane actually. Top lane's a bit too healthy, but I think you'd be able to trade this pretty effectively. So in the grand scheme of things, I'd rather get this mid lane tower here for JDG than worry about boss. Well, the lane economy snapshot provided by MasterCard is pretty good for Kanavi. On the other side of things, KT doing all right. Rift Herald gonna come down though and try and even that score and maybe even a kill onto the Jax also, but they decide not to commit for it because of course, not gonna bite off more than they necessarily need to. No plates game with that turret though, but that is yeah, not very far away from dead. It still forces a response though from everyone on KT, and now they're really behind the curve, right? JDG continuously pushing in these side waves and getting a lot of damage down there. Looks like Knight will be able to pick it up. And BDD goes in. This is the Emperor's Divide. Be able to get out of there. Knight only needed the dissonance movement speed for that one as well. Holds on to the flash. Kind of huge here. BDD still without his. Yeah, I think BDD just tried to get the flash there. Uh, it, even by yourself, I don't know if you actually have enough damage unless anyone else shows up to take down. Still going to be a win for Knight. Gets the turret, gets to keep his summoners, and gets to go back with an extra bag of gold. And as well now with a minute until this next dragon, you're going to be in a great position here for JDG. Not having that Emperor's Divide makes it hard to make a play up towards BDD, so you're keeping your eyes on Kuz to see what he can potentially do. I'm finding the pick before this next one starts, because when I look at the items that have been picked up for JDG, they are in such a good spot to try and contend with KT when it comes to this next objective, especially when the resets start to come through for uh, the final little bit for Ruler. And we just need to see who's going to be able to find the team fight on their terms. JDG, a team incredibly adept at getting that. The wombo combo from this composition, fantastic. I find it a little bit of a worry though when there is the Azir from BDD on the other side of things. Because he can always find these angles. We might see an opportunity here, but the Shattering Strike is going to say no. KT will try and get away. They will be successful. Yeah, you start to see as well. KT's trying to set up side lanes. Uh, already keen pushing in. But if they don't actually catch anyone on JDG, JDG is just going to be able to bounce the waves back. Both teams fighting for this Dragon. And I think for KT, this is a must get. Can't allow JDG to get Soul Point this early on. Control of the map, absolutely massive. Keen taking a big chunk there, about a third of his health bar from an attack dissonance combo. These commands from the Orianna. KT looking to close in. It's a familiar area. Opposite sides of the rift, though, for both of Ooh, these teams. KT nine. still looking to try and get out of here. The Q doesn't land. The Infernal Chains don't work either. Empress Divide comes in, but the quickness is too good. BDD trying to escape, but he won't get up. It's Ruler that manages to take him down, and now Koz is on the run. Kanabi is looking for him. It's a double for the Sivir, and they are not done yet. In they go once again. The Crashdown tries to get Koz out, but is Keen going to survive? He is. Still, KT are done with this fight. Colossal win there for JDG. They're able to take down BDD and Lahens as the people on KT a little bit too far forward. They see the moment of weakness, a lot of investment, but two kills, a mid lane turret, and soul point to boot. 
And it's an absolute disaster for KT. The positioning there on River just wasn't what they wanted at all. They set up too many angles of attack for JDG, and they just realized it that little bit too late. And that's when the panic starts to set in. And I want to have a look when we get into this replay as to how it actually sets off, because you can see where 369 is coming from. He has an incredible position, but I think the panic holds from KT is what comes back to bite. I'm also wondering what happened to aiming in that fight, right? Because he wasn't able to actually do any damage. BDD obviously bought a little bit of time, but wasn't nearly enough. And, you know, this is this is not oh, taking into ruler, account that this ruler. is JDG. Ruler! Yeah, hook is going to connect there. Ruler! Going to be taken down underneath. He's out of turret mid lane. There it is. The ruler position. It worked out the last game. He's going to get punished for it this time. Yeah, we've seen this a million times, Atlas. Um, you know, sometimes it's nice to see that something stayed the same yeah. as ruler. <laughs> and that's actually really big because that means that there is no flash on the sivir as we go back to the previous fight. I want to watch here, though, because you've got the flank here, you've got the flank coming through, but watch these panic ults that come through from BDD and Kuz. So as the ult comes through from BDD, the, ult, the magnetic storm keeps Kanavi on BDD. It means he doesn't get the separation. BDD's pushed out, and BDD is going down again. Well, so Hens, Hens is going to get taken out in this one, aiming trying to offer some damage back, but they are some uh, tanky members of JDG. Now, Kuz, one versus three, but does have BDD waiting in the wings. The magnet storm comes through. BDD Trying to get the autos across is now aiming is going to join the fight. BDD still a full health swoops in, picks up missing. But so he's gonna up. dash out of there immediately. Rule is trying to pop up, but he can't actually get to this fight because Kanabi's already dead. Keen looking for an opportunity. Infernal chains leap strike to the ward, and Keen gets out. And it starts off with a great play from missing and Kanavi, but then KT is able to turn it around. It will be a one-for-one -one trade, I think, but the kills going over to aiming is a big win for them. I mean, the fact you get those kills, but also massively with Shockwave by night does absolutely nothing in that fight, and it means that Kanavi ends up having to go forward, try to get into position where he can follow through, and KT, they needed something to try and slow down this momentum, and that might have just been it. I think Kanavi was ready to run away with this game, yeah. sitting at 1-0 and 3, and it all started with the hands getting caught. Very reminiscent of the play they the setup towards bot side, right? It's this Rakan Wukong combo that actually is big. And then here, it feels initially like KT overplayed their hand with Kuz getting focused, but this is Aftershock Rel. So Kuz, very tanky, is able to absorb, uh, absorb the initial damage. And I like Missing trying to get onto BDD here to keep him out of the fight, but great positioning, sets it back up. Now watch the Shockwave, flashed away by BDD, so it connects onto absolutely nobody. And then look at BDD, blinking health bar in the back line. 369 and Ruler late to the fight, because Ruler got picked off in the early stage underneath that mid tower. So KT punishing JDG really well for that overextension. Yeah, on the hunt was used there by Ruler to try and get into the fight, but just wasn't there for it. Nice opportunity capitalized on there by KT, but it's going to need more than that to get them over the line. The big thing here is that KT needs to win the next Drake fight. There are 1k gold down, but if they can get a Drake fight or maybe get a Baron, could be an angle missing, though. Okay, cuz was spotted, I believe. On that drink, and he's know. the one that thinks that they don't have the information. Is Grand Entrance going to connect? And I don't think too much more is going to come of this. They do manage to clear out vision. Missing has collected. He is, he's just hoarding information. Missing just has so, he's a database, man. Yeah, nothing is missing on that no, database. No, he's named completely I will say, wrong. <laughs> I will say, though, it's like, this is exactly how JDG want to play it. If Eddie did a great job of highlighting it coming into the day, it's like, hey, we want to look for a pick before these objectives start, fights start off. We don't want you to actually fight us on an even footing. We want to make sure oh. you're behind coming in with no I think they're info. going. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, they're on the Baron. Uh, Rule is going to move back to the mid lane now. 369 has the earlier track towards this Baron pit, Knight moving in. Yeah, gonna have to back away from this. JDG scoped it out. I do like an opportunistic play. I also like backing away when you feel scared. I think it's just trying to draw JDG out of the turtle that they had on this bottom side of the map. If you can get them to invest these wards, as you can see on that top end of the map, it makes it a little bit easier then for KT to get a position on that bottom side. At the moment, though, still heavy vision in that bottom side of the map for JDG that they'll look to try and use. Push for Ruler in this mid lane as well. Going to make it very difficult for KT to try and contest when JDG are looking to take this vision back. And, and what's really big is that with JDG having a vision control, Wait, aiming are we just going? only has one ultimate, right? Like he, he can he can try and get away from either 369 or Kanavi, but. Uh, if he's not able to position himself immaculately, which has been a really big issue for this player, which is why his Zeri and his Kai'Sa are some of his strongest picks, 
won't be able to have a big impact in the team fights, and a lot of the gold is Han Im. Uh, Bidido and Knight both sitting on exactly the same item. Sword Pan Boots, uh, Shadow Flame, and Ludens. They're basically dealing true damage to any non tank that they hit. Right now, we're about to go full A-Rap, though. You're going to see oh, both teams trying to commit. And the KT, go? yeah, they're just going to go for the Baron area again, try and put pressure onto JDG. Because if you think KT, if they find a moment oh. like that where BDD gets over the wall, punishes JDG for the lack of information, that's where they can come back keen, sneaking up through bot side. He hasn't been spotted. Yeah, he's actually looking for a little bit of engage. I thought he might just start the Dragon by himself and try and take that one down. But instead, KT just regrouping like you were talking about. Bit of the KRAM situation here. And I guess 70% of the players on the Rift right now uh, do kind of fit the bill. We have seen this many times, Chronicler. Let's settle in, shall yeah, we? The, the thing, though, is that JDG is the one who actually hold all the cards because they don't have to go for this Dragon. This is just an individual Cloud Drake for KT. So if KT over-invests, JDG just goes to Baron, takes that. There is enough vision, though, and we see Cuz and Lahans A looking as Keen is in a oh, flank. Yeah, huge flank position. There's the Magnus to almost see whether Jackson can get in here because Missing has found everyone. Two man Empress Divide comes in aiming. Is starting to free him, but it's a double kill for Ruler. The Sivir is ripping them to shreds, and Keen was too late to this one. BDD did manage to grab one there, but they'll still grab the triple kill and they'll grab the soul. BDD looks for Missing, but of course, Missing's just fine. It is a miscommunication on KT as Cuz goes in so deep, Keen isn't there. So KT is forced to commit to this play, but there is no one's actually put enough threat on Ruler. He just gets to stand there and gun them down. And you're in the blender at that stage. As soon as you try to move through these choke points, Oriana Oath, Sivir, uh, Ricochet is bouncing through everyone. You called it here. As you get to go in from the hands, oh, Missing isn't able to do anything. Ruler gets out of position so you don't catch him. And Missing is causing so many issues on the back line alongside Kanavi that they can't actually get into a position to threaten onto JDG with where they are. They know moving through that choke point is just going to be the demise of you. So they back off, but TP in towards this grab. Oh, they're going to try and go for an aggressive play towards the Baron here, KT. I think they're feeling mighty threatened, but everyone on JDG is ready. There's no way this is going to be working out. No, it's certainly not, as Hook is going to get Lehens in, but he doesn't really want to. Um, this ward will get turned off for now, as BDD dealing with all of these ricochets flying in. KT are, to clear out the wave. KT are investing everything into this, though. Keen TP, BDD TP. They desperately wanted to make sure that they were going to be on the map to contest this, but it does give an opportunity now for a 369 to say, hey, we're going to play slow, maybe play for Keen, actually. Yeah, it does get slowed down by the dissonance there. Shockwave is going to pick up Keen. Counter-Strike comes in, but it's not going to be enough. In the meantime, another fight is going to break out. It's three versus four, and JDG are doing all right. Kanavi goes golden for now. Knight takes down BDD, and it's on aiming. If KT are going to make this one right, it has to be him, but he's dead already. And there's the shutdown to come through, because the last man standing, and JDG, I think they've just gone to match point. They find their one opportunity for the pick, and immediately they turn for the rest. JDG are hungry. They want to keep pushing forward. There is a reason why you don't try and match JDG with team fight to team fight comp. It's because of players like that. They invest two people to the top side of the map, get a free kill on Keen, and then somehow win the fight on the other end as well. And it wasn't like they were massively ahead. They are now, and they're going to take down a Nexus as well as JDG. They are one step away from the semifinals.